Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome today, subhanAllah, 16. Tonight is the 17th. Tonight is the Battle of Badr. And we are just chugging along here. I hope your days and nights have been beautiful and you're all healthy and you're able to do all the things that you want to do. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This is Faith, a love story where we are going through the different aspects of our aqidah, our faith, our iman, and also linking them when possible to some of the verses that we are reading today for this day of Ramadan. Today, we our topic is miracles, miracles of prophets. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. And this is in and of itself such a such a beautiful part, really, of the love story that is faith. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> when he sent prophets to humanity, he made sure that they had the miracle that the people needed. The people that they came to needed that miracle. Not another one, that one. So, for example, <clears throat> we read in Surah al maryam about Isa alayhi salam. And we know that the miracle he was sent with was for his people and it was all about health. The miracle of miracles of the body. The fact that he spoke as an infant. The, the miracle of his mother's pregnancy. The miracle of bringing people back from sickness to health, from death to life with Allah's permission. And then with Moses, which is in sort of the Taha, the story of Moses, is the story of the, the experience, the miracle of Musa, which was the miracle of magic. Why magic? Because the people were enthralled with it at the time. And so <clears throat> the miracles, we're going to talk about miracles. We want to see this as the, the true evidence of love that it truly is. So the English word for miracle, let's start there. <clears throat> we use the word miracle in English to mean really so many things. We mean it for just something that happens like, oh, it's a miracle that my cake turned out right. Or, oh, it's a miracle that you answered the phone. So we use it in a lot of sort of regular ways in our day to day. But <clears throat> the word here we're talking about, excuse me, <clears throat> is the word mu'jiza. The word mu'jiza in Arabic is the word that is the evidence of the love story. It's the staff of Moses. It's the healing of Jesus. And the mu'jiza also is different than the karamat. You might have heard that word too, also often translated as a miracle. The English language, we don't have a lot of... Um, we don't have a lot of words for miracle, unless maybe you can help me with one. But the karamat, a karama, also often translated as miracle, is something for the people of Allah. And even here, anytime there is a miracle, it is to help the people believe. It is to help the people come to the straight path. Every prophet carried a miracle or even miracles to help the people believe in him. SubhanAllah. Now, these mu'ajizat, they, they point to the absolute truth of the mission of that prophet and the truth of the prophet himself. In fact, the word mu'ajiza literally means something that overwhelms the opponents. So it's a thing, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> so sorry. It's something that is gifted to the Anbiya, to the Prophets, so they can astonish people. So through their astonishment, they can be guided. Ya Allah, Allah knows us. Allah who created us knows us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that a miracle will move our hearts. And sometimes we're all looking for that. We're really looking for something 
that will overwhelm us and take us out of our rut, take us out of where we are. Now, where, there are some conditions for something to be a mu'jiza. One of them, it has to defy natural law and be astonishing to people. And it might be, uh, and, and generally, it is something, not generally, excuse me, it is something that Allah grants to people that they either see themselves or they hear of it because of a prophet. So we are hearing of it in our day and age when it comes to the other prophets, the prophets that came before because we didn't live in their time. If something happens that is astonishing or is not is amazing, but it is at the hand of a person who is a sinner or a wrongdoer, then it is not a mu'ajiza. It is a trial and a distraction or a trick. These are important things to understand as we come near the end of time. None of us want to be tricked or delusioned by the jahn. And now another condition is that the prophet who has given that mu'ajiza, uses it to challenge people, to demonstrate truth to them, to bring them to the message of prophethood, to bring them to tawheed. Also, that mu'ajiza, it must occur during the era of prophethood, during the time of the, the prophet's life. Anything that happens in another time has a different name. So for example, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were things that happened to him previous to his prophethood. The stone and the rock giving him salam. The, sh the shade on his business trip with Maysara. All of these are irhas, or these are, these are that which prepares the way for prophethood. And it must be something that happens that that brings truth to prophethood. So if someone today <coughs> were to claim a miracle that belies a prophet, any prophet, any prophet, then it is not a marjiza. Okay. Now, here's our, our quandary. We live in an era and a time that's just out of about 100 years ago the world was flung into the modernist age. And the modernist age was really anti-miracle. Very, very much so. Science, people began to believe in science over miracles and actually struggled to talk about miracles and struggled to believe in them and wanted to find scientific explanations for miracles. So instead of feeling excited about miracles, People felt embarrassed to believe in them. And we have a stage where people wrote books about the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and they didn't mention his miracles or they denied them. Can you imagine? SubhanAllah. And that was just as a, a reflection of the society at the time. Alhamdulillah, today we've moved out of that a bit. We moved from modernism to postmodernism. Science began to disappoint people as we began to understand that money can often determine scientific outcomes. Global culture and media in the new age, so to speak, began to talk about miracles again. And so Muslims, again, felt comfortable to talk about miracles and to, to report on them and to think about them and rely on them again. Alhamdulillah. Now, the reason for miracles, the reason that the human being needs miracles is, first of all, to establish the truth and reality of a prophetic call. So the, when Allah subhanahu wa gives miracles to his prophets and he allows the people to see and experience them, I love that sentence because there, are, there may be miracles. I'm, I'm sure there are that prophets have had, or even awliya, that are never spoken. Because they are not for the purpose of bringing truth to people. They are for the purpose of honoring that prophet, for example. But here, 
The, the first reason is to bring truth to people. When we are allowed to see and experience them and read about them, we are offered as part of the love story, a quick road to belief, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the straight path. Second, a mu'ajiza can occur to honor the prophet or the messenger. This, this is the, what happened in Islam with Isra and Ma'raj. The Prophet ﷺ had been rejected and dejected from Da'if. He had turned to the Prophet وسلم, Excuse me. The Prophet ﷺ had turned to Allah Azza wa Jal <coughs> with the most beautiful du'a turning and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, everything is fine as long as you're not angry with me. Seeking refuge in the light of the fate of the countenance of Allah, by which all darkness is dispelled. It's such a beautiful um, dua. And so he was gifted a one night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and then to the heavens. And this miracle was a gift. It was a gift to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the same way, it was a gift to the community of the believers. All the prayer was a gift to the community of believers. The actual incident was a gift to the community of believers, to us, to all of us today. Miracles can also occur to warn the heedless, to warn the disbelievers. Sometimes a prophet can receive a miracle that will wake up the sleeping or remove the dullness from people's hearts, send them a warning. You know, this. <clears throat> sorry, I'm struggling today a bit with my voice. You know, the story of Abu Jahl, the greatest enemy of the Prophet ﷺ. Once there was a tribe, a man from the tribe of Arash. He came to Mecca, he was on a business trip. And he sold some camels to Abu Jahl. Okay? Now Abu Jahl put off paying for them. He didn't pay for them right away. So the Arashi man went to the nobles of Quraysh and said, is there anyone from you who can help me against Abu Hakam, Abu Jahl, to get his money back? And so the, ma the men of Quraysh, they were, they were intending mocking and harming the Prophet Sallallahu so to this stranger, they pointed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi because they knew that Abu Jahl wouldn't listen to him. Now, uh, so, but the, so, and he didn't know. So he went to Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi took his hand and went to Abu Jahl's house. Imagine everything that had gone on. He knocked on the door and Abu Jahl asked, who is it? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told him. He came out. To meet him, and the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Jahl, Give this man his dues. Abu Jahl said, Oh, yes, certainly, yes, I will. Oh, yes, certainly, very meek, very humble, went in. He took the money, he came out, and he gave it to him. Well, the man, the man went to the leaders of Quraysh and he said, Thank you. That was amazing. That man got me the money, no problem, it was easy, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. The leaders of Quraysh. <coughs> Excuse me. The leaders of Quraysh were astonished. They couldn't believe it. They said, <coughs> what happened? Why did you obey Muhammad? We never saw you do that before. <coughs> he said, wretched. By God, when I heard Muhammad's voice, I panicked and I became like a puppet. I opened the door and I looked at him and I clearly saw a giant camel by his side. I never saw such a fearful camel before. It had terrible teeth and a strong upper body. By God, if I refused Muhammad's request, I felt it would eat me up. <laughs> so this was a miracle that happened for what? For the purpose of Abu Jahan turning well, to be warned, actually, he doesn't turn to the prophet, he doesn't turn to the truth. But that was the purpose of it. SubhanAllah. Ya Allah. <clears throat> now, uh, there is a difference between a ma'jiza and a karama. I should mention this. A karama is something that is 
for the believers, the awliya of Allah, someone who's really committed to obedience and worship. And I only bring it up, I know I'm not going to emphasize it, I want to go to the Quran, but I just want to say that if you want to grow, you need to find the ability to have company, spend time with awliya Allah. If you want to grow your heart, spend time with the people who love Allah. So that's my, that's my side piece of advice for today. Now, we mentioned about the types of marjas. So let's go to the, the surah. First, it's Maryam. <clears throat> In surah Maryam, we have these, this, uh, these story first of Zakaria and Yahya. And then of Maryam herself. When Angel Jibreel came to her, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا Angel Jibreel sent to Maryam. فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرَ السَّوِيَّةِ And he looked like a human being. And Maryam responds with strength and clarity. قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ I seek refuge in the merciful. إِن كُنْتُ تَقِيَّةً Qala, he said, Innama ana rasulu rabbik. I am a messenger from your Lord. Li ahabalaki ghulam and zakiya to give you the gift of a pure son. How did she feel about this? This was not only a miracle, it was something really overwhelming. And she is shocked. How could I have a son? وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرْ No man has touched me. وَلَمْ أَكُوْ بَغِيَّ And that's not going to happen. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ قَالَ رَبُّ قَالَ رَبُّكِ هُوَ أَعَلَيَّ هَيَّا وَلَنَجْعَلَهُ آيَةَ لِلنَّاسِ وَرَحْمَةً مِنْ مِنَّا وَكَانَ أَمْرًا مَقْضِيَّا It is easy. It is easy for Allah to do a miracle. It is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His miracle. SubhanAllah. And so she conceived him. That by itself is a great miracle. It's an incredible miracle. And I want us to just take a moment and recognize that the miracle of Isa was a miracle to help us on the path of love. The miracle of Maryam, alayha salam, was a miracle to help us on the path of love. For all of you women who walk on this path and sometimes feel maybe left out or some FOMO or something. Maybe you have some feelings around the st state of the world, the state of the world for women, the long history of the state of the world for women. You can read this surah and you can calm your heart with the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only blessed Maryam greatly, greatly, but elevated her as an example to all of humanity and gave her her own miracles. Her own miracles, when she shook the palm tree and the dates fell down. That doesn't happen. You can't shake a palm tree and have the dates come down. That doesn't, that's not how it works. That was by itself a miracle. The miracle of silence, when she went back to her people and she pointed to the child who then spoke. I am a servant of God. He's given me the scripture and made me a prophet. All of this while he was a, an infant in her arms. <coughs> and then the Prophet is quoted in the Quran as saying, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And he, one, of his, one of his goals, one of the parts of his message, is his fealty and piety to his mother, Maryam. This amazing person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted the beauty of the message of Isa within her womb. This by itself is a, is a miracle. It's a miracle that brings us on the path of love. ذلك عيسى ابن مريم even his name قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون and then if you go to Surah Taha you'll find the next miracle not the next but another miracle 
the miracle of Musa. And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has the story of Moses reached you? And you were called upon to reflect on his story. We're called upon to think about his story. And what happened? And how he went and got a torch from the fire. And as he was there, فَلَمَّا أَتَاهَا نُودِيَ يَا مُوسَى He was called out to. إِنِّي أَنَا رَبُّكَ فَخْلَانَ عَلَيْكَ I am your Lord, so take off your sandals. إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى You're in the, va- the sacred valley of Tua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him how he chose him. And how he is ordered to worship him alone. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّنِي أَنَّ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعَبُدْنِي وَأَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةِ لِذِكْرِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares the truth of his oneness and the purpose of prayer to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى What's in your hand? What's in your right hand? He says, يَا عَصَاي My staff. أَتَوَكَّلُوا عَلَيْهَا I lean on it. وَأَحَشُّوا بِهَا عَلَى غَنَمِي And I push my sheep around with it. And it has other jobs as well. And Allah tells him, قَالَ أَلْقِيهَا يَا مُوسَى Throw it down. And so he does. And what does it become? A slithering serpent. Hayyun. Hayyatun. Tas'a. A slithering serpent. And Allah tells him, Khudha wa la takhaf. Pick it up and don't be afraid. Sana'iduha siyirataha al-ula. And we shall return it to its original shape. That's his first miracle. The miracle of the stick turning to a, a snake. A real snake. Second miracle, he says, put your hand under your armpit. It will come out shining and white and unblemished. That's a translation. Shining, white, unblemished. Bright. And then, this is so that we can show. So we can show you our signs, our miracles. He is given a miracle. Then he is told what to do with it. Because a miracle is not a marjiza as long as the people haven't heard it. اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى And then he makes dua as well. قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعلي وزيرا من أهلي He asks for help. He asks that he can speak well and he asks for help. Again, محبت الله, hang out with the people of Allah. If you want to grow your heart. Harun, أخي, my brother, Harun. And Allah gives him his brother. And they go to the, the Pharaoh and to the magicians. And they throw the, he throws the, the staff and the magicians bow down. Because a mu'ajiza is only a mu'ajiza if people see it. And it is part of the our story. If As a Muslim, it is part of your story. The story of the mu'ajizat of the prophets is part of your story. We, we rest in the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has continuously sent us prophets, sent us prophets to teach us, to hold us on the path with miracles that would help to solidify our faith. Miracles, and for us as Muslims, the miracle of the Quran remains today. Isn't that beautiful? What I mean is, we can't access the miracle of Musa, and we can't access the miracle of Jesus, but we can access the miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We can access his miracle, and that is part of the mu'ajiza of the Quran that it is indeed accessible to all of us. I hope you are all reading it and connecting to it in this month of Ramadan. 
Congratulations on making it to the day 16. Tonight is day 17, Battle of Badr. I'll be on Celebrate Mercy tonight and also tomorrow at Rabat. Rabata we have our own uh, event through the masjid where Aunt Renda Martini will be speaking. If you are a member of our Rabata Patreon, after that you'll be able to access her talk on Patreon if you miss out in the masjid, but that's the only place you'll be able to see it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. I've been showing you my calendar, but it's too far away from me for today. So I'll just let you know, today, I hope that you will donate to rabata.kindful.com. Invest in Muslim women. Invest in these kinds of lessons. Oh, the online auction. Yes, okay, for the online auction. It's not over. It's all month. <coughs> and I haven't talked about it a lot, so thanks for bringing it up. I am auctioning off a, a couple of really fun things. Go to two of... 32auctions.com forward slash Rabota. Oh my God, the coolest things. There are, first of all, Afsha, our development director, she's auctioning off how to make roti. We have a, a, a true trained expert percussionist who is auctioning off drumming lessons. We have my mom. I kid you not. You see this couch behind me and all the beautiful colors of this couch? My mom painted, I kid you not, painted a table for the auction. My mother is an artist, a professional artist. She's been an artist her whole life. She's been retired for a, a while now. She painted a table and made it user-friendly. So like you can put your coffee cup on it or whatever. It's a side table. It can go next to a bed or next, in, next to a chair. It has a full drawer you can put stuff in. You can check all of those things out at 32auctions.com forward slash Roboto. I'm auctioning off a couple of things. I have a box of mystery books that I'm putting together. Each book has a little story about why I chose it. And then I'm also auctioning off. These are my own personal books, my own personal library. And I'm also auctioning off. I really went back and forth about whether to do this because it's a time consuming thing and an expensive thing if I were to do it if, out in the world. Um, but I'm also auctioning off professional mentorship. So this is a little different than spiritual mentorship. It's professional mentorship. Of course, I am who I am, so the spiritual part always enters in. But this is to mentor any of you who are hoping to move into leadership positions, are running a business, you are hoping to grow in your career, run a nonprofit, um, start a project and follow through. It'll be a full year of professional mentorship. Also, our Daybreak Press team is auctioning off a training to help you go from book to publishing. So lots of fun stuff. And that's just, we have artwork by professional artists, beautiful, beautiful calligraphy work. Um, there are so many things I'm forgetting them. Beautiful uh, embroidery by different artists around the world. Really beautiful. Go check out the stuff, 32auctions.com forward slash Shabata. And have a beautiful rest of your day. Kalamantum Bukhe. Tonight is Badlub Badr. Salam alaikum.